the Pokemon Champion. A title reserved for only the very strongest trainer in a given region. One who has overcome insurmountable odds to prove that they are stronger than any trainer who has come before them. And, God willing, any future trainer who would dare challenge for their crown. It is a title coveted by many, but given to only a fair few who have ascended to the pantheon of battling's gods. Or sometimes any old kid who just passed their high school exams. Across the nine generations of Pokemon, there have been 16 such trainers that we have been forced to do battle with. Some powerful endgame bosses that truly test your skills. And then there was that one time that you had to fight Hal. But recently, I've been wondering, of all these strong trainers, which one is the strongest of the strong? Which one is the monster among monsters? The king of kings? I asked myself the question, which champion is objectively the strongest? And when I have questions, I get answers. So, if you're as excited as I am for this video and want to prove that you're the strongest champion, then take that subscribe button to Suplex City. Come here. Let's do this. Richard, hit that intro. Now, when commenter Your Pug King originally suggested this topic to me, my first thought was to, well, do what I usually do. Try and create an overly complicated statistical model based on a bunch of random objective criteria that seem pretty comprehensive at a first glance, but are really just all the things that would be easiest for me to put into a spreadsheet. But in this case, I don't think that kind of process is going to cut it. Sure, I could look at a bunch of stuff like level gaps, held items, base stats, do some math, and come up with some weird answer like Iris is the strongest champion, but I think that would sort of be missing the point. We all know that Cynthia from Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl is the strongest champion. I mean, they gave her a Serene Grace Togekiss with Thunder Wave and Air Slash. She's out here trying to paraflinch a bunch of 11 year olds. Good God. But if we're being really serious, the strongest champion is you. By the end of every single Pokemon game, you are the strongest trainer in the region, and you single-handedly dethroned every single champion on my list. And let's be honest, once you learn the type chart and stuff, it probably wasn't even that hard. If you've played all the games already, you know which champion gave you the most trouble. Again, it was the Cynthia rematch. Her Garchomp is tied with Red's Pikachu for the highest level trainer Pokemon in the history of the franchise. Except it's a freaking Garchomp instead of a yellow rat. What I'm trying to say is, I don't think you're here to watch me calculate which Pokemon is hypothetically the strongest. Being a champion is all about battling. So let's do some freaking battles. Sorry, mathematicians, but today we're leaving the theoretical behind and doing a good old fashioned experiment. A grand tourney, one that'll make Ash's little escapades in the show look like child's play to crown the one true Pokemon champion. So let's start off with everyone's favorite part of an epic tourney, establishing the rules. Like I said, we have 16 trainers that we fought as champions in the game so far. Every champion will be using whatever their strongest team to date is. Levels will not be adjusted. Whatever level their team was in the games, that's where the levels stay. This is a test of raw strength, not how cleverly you put together a team. Every champion must lead with their original lead in the game, but after that, it's fair game. It's a single elimination tournament. You lose a match, you're out. Last trainer standing is the winner. That means there's a total of 16 battles that I have to try and simulate. Now, I could sit here and try and control both sides, getting into the headspace of each trainer to figure out which move they would use in a given scenario, but I'll be honest, that sounds super boring. So instead, I decided to recruit a lab partner for myself to help me out. My good friend, Richard. Come on, what, what, what are you doing? What? No, I clearly was not talking about you. What, you, you read the script. You know what I'm talking about. You get out of here, ruining my intro. Today, I'm being joined by my good friend, Icy Richard. And Richard, it's great to have you. 
look, I don't know how much more obvious I can make it that I was talking to him, not you. I, context, okay. Here's what's going to happen. For the rest of the video, if I want to talk to you, I will call you assistant. If I don't say that, I'm not talking to you. God, are you are you listening? C come on, man. It's it's really not that complicated. Come on, get it. Get it together. Like I mentioned, we have 16 trainers in this tournament. So before we get started, we'll quickly run through all of them so you know which team everyone's using. First up is the OG champion from all the way back in 1996. Blue! He'll be using his champion rematch team from Fire Red and Leaf Green. Because for some reason, when you encounter him at the Battle Tree in Sun and Moon, which is supposed to be like 10 years after this, his Pokemon have lost a couple levels. Now, Blue's team can change depending on which starter you choose, but I mean, come on, they named him Blue. They clearly want him to have the Blastoise. Up next is the other kid from Powtown, the one to dethrone Blue, Red! Really? Real creative guys, come on. Obviously though, Red will be using his Mount Silver team from Heart Gold and Soul Silver with his monstrous level 88 Pikachu. The Dragon Master Lance is using his champion rematch team from Heart Gold and Soul Silver, and Steven Stone has his rematch team from Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire with that beefy Mega Metagross. Unfortunately, Emerald doesn't have updated teams for Pokemon League rematches, so Wallace is stuck with his original team much unlike Cynthia, who has her insanely stacked, high-level team loaded up with items from Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Woo! That is a team, let me tell ya! Now, this next one is a little interesting, because even though N isn't your typical Pokemon champion, he did defeat Alder, which earned him a place in this bracket. N has a lot of different teams throughout the game, but we decided to give him his summer team from Black and White 2, only with his Rapidash swapped out for Reshiram from earlier in the game. I mean, come on, he's gotta have his ace. Also, we went with Reshiram instead of Zekrom because, well, it's a sun team and a fire type just fit a little better. Man, Unova was chock full of champions, wasn't it? Because right up next is that aforementioned Outer with his rematch team up against Iris and her hard mode championship team! Diantha is another trainer without a rematch team, but thankfully her Pokemon are at least in the 60s, Wallace! And while Kukui technically isn't a champion, he is the guy that you face at the end of the league to become the first inaugural Alola champion, so I think he's close enough. Anyway, he's using his rematch team. Same goes for Hal and his Ultra Sun Ultra Moon rematch team. And then there's Leon, the infamous unbeatable champion from Sword and Shield. He's using his champion's tournament team, assuming the player chose, what was it? What's that mod again? Ah, yes, Sobble, my bad. Huh. So this way, he doesn't double up on fire types, and the Haxorus from his first champion battle was added on to fill out his team. And then we have our two most recent champions from Paldia, Gita, and Nimona both of which have their teams from the Academy Ace Tournament, assuming that the player chose Quaxley because he's the cutest boy and I will hear no claims to the contrary. Ah, 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 ah. No claims. And last but not least, I think you forgot about Trace from Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, who would be using his championship rematch team. Who the hell is Trace? Welcome, one and all, to the Championship Grand Tourney. It is a lovely day down there in Pokemon Cyberspace. Wouldn't you say there, Richard? That's right. He wasn't I talking wasn't to you, assistant. I was talking to you, assistant. Can't work in these conditions. That's right, Charlie. A great day for some battles of truly epic proportions. The brackets has been randomized, the matches are set, let's not waste another minute lollygagging, and let's get right onto the matches. Now, to save a little bit of time, we're not going to go through each and every match, so for round one, Charlie, why don't you just hit us with those results? My pleasure, Richard. Our opening match is the two rival champions themselves, Blue versus How. The cocky, arrogant, true rival from the very beginning versus the friendly, bumbling pal. Blue did the rival champion twist first, but did How do it better? Well, it looks like How narrowly avoids a crushing defeat. 
And by that, I mean he narrowly avoids getting clean swept, but he still lost. How lost? Real bad. The next matchup is one of epic proportions. I mean, a lot of folks expected this one to be the finals, but we're giving it to you in round one. Both trainers are evenly matched in terms of levels. Neither has a nonsensical typed themed team that makes them susceptible to getting swept by a single Pokemon. I mean, it is truly anyone's game. And looking at the results, am I reading this right? Cynthia defeats Red in a clean sweep. Not a single Pokemon lost. Are you kidding me? I knew Cynthia was good, Richard. But after that performance, if she doesn't go all the way, I'm going to owe a lot of people a lot of money. Our third matchup is Steven Stone versus La Primera herself. This was a very close battle, with both sides going kill for kill for most of the fight. But in the end, that Mega Metagross proved to be too much for Gita to handle, and Steven advances to round two. Next up was Diantha versus Wallace, and unfortunately, the master of the seas was unable to overcome that 11 level gap and came up short. And Diantha was one of the lowest level trainers in here, so he really never stood a chance. Some truly spectacular matches to be sure. Now, how are things looking on the other side of the bracket, Richard? Well, Charlie, all I can say is the championship tournament did not disappoint. Lance vs. the unbeatable Leon was about as hard-hitting as a match as you can get. Now, unfortunately, based on how we set up these battles, Leon did not have access to his Gigantamax Charizard. But, even with his hair handicap, his superior was able to exploit a major weakness of rock in Lance's team and come out with a decisive victory on the other side. Then, we had a clash of the ages from the Unova stage. Outer versus Iris. The wise old veteran versus the plucky young upstarter. But while Outer's years of experience made him a formidable foe, in the end, Iris's raw passion was enough to eke out a victory over her predecessor. Now, N versus Trace was, well, I think we might have been okay if we didn't remind you about Trace, since he was, uh, how do I put this nicely, terrible? And last but not least, Namuna versus Kukui. Now, we had a rule that trainers can only use uh, things such as sterilization or Z-moves if it was native to their region, and in this match, we had a true battle of the gimmicks. However, it was Namona's sterilization by her opponent that sent Namona onto round two and sent Kukui packing back to Alola. And thus, that wraps up round one. And Charlie, you gotta be impressed by these battles so far. <laughs> right you are, Richard. We all know that Cynthia is my pick to win. But I gotta say that unbeatable champion Leon really impressed me. Even without that Gigantamax Charizard on his side, I think he has what it takes to meet Cynthia in the finals. <laughs> well, he's gonna have to go through Iris in this next round, and with her showing in that first battle, she's proved herself to be the tough mountain for him to climb. <laughs> yeah, 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 we'll, we'll see, we'll see. Indeed we will, Charlie. Now it's time for the corner finals. These round two matchups are brought to you by Pika Fuel the electrifying energy drink to give you the jumpstart you need to start your day. You know, Richard, I'm not just saying this for the sponsors. Pika Fuel has completely changed my mornings. I have a cup of this every day, and I gotta say, it really boosts my productivity. In fact, I got a cup of it right here. Oh, oh, Christ. Oh, what is that? Oh, is that what Pika Fuel tastes like? God, it's all, oh, what? Hmm? Oh, we're still rolling? We're starting off round two with a bang. Fresh off her resounding defeat over Red, Cynthia is taking on the other Palatown boy, and unsurprisingly, she's taking him to school again. Another clean sweep, Richard. Wow, so not only has Cynthia not lost a battle yet, she hasn't even lost a Pokemon. You're damn right. And at the pace she's going, I don't think she will. That Spiritomb has proven to be a very solid lead with the ability to tank pretty much any hit and throw out Will-O-Wisp left and right. And her Togekiss can single-handedly shut down pretty much anyone with a single Thunder Wave. Heck, her ace in the whole Garchomp has barely hit the field yet. <laughs> well, we'll have to wait and see. But folks, we have a treat for you in this second round of two matchups. It's a battle of the Mega Evolutions in Diantha and Steven Stone. Unfortunately, for abundance of rock and fairy types, it seems that Diantha really didn't appreciate Steven's still studied team. And let me and let me tell you, that Metagross has been a real problem for all the folks here so far in the tournament. And I dare say, I don't see that changing. 
anytime soon. Right you are, Richard. Right you are. Heading over to the other side of the bracket, we have Leon, the unbeatable champion, versus the rookie Iris. Richard, how badly did my boy Leon win this one? Well, Charlie, Iris is far from a rookie. She has a well-established career as not only the gym leader, but the champion, and in fact... Fine, fine, if we're splitting hairs here, then... And in fact, it was a very close match, an early Dragon Dead setup from Iris' hackers put in a lot of work during that first half of the match. Leon, I will admit, was poised to make a comeback, but his real boom missed not one, but two high horsepowers in a row, which really sealed the deal and allowed Iris to make a pretty decisive win. What? You heard me. Kid's good. Oh, that's bull. Okay, uh, come on, come on. No, no, I'm sorry, but that is bull. High horsepower has what, 95% accuracy? That's a 2% chance to miss twice in a row. I mean, come on, Richard. Y yes, I, I understand that, but... One in 1,400. And Leon couldn't use his Gigantamax? What? Well, he was at a disadvantage from the start. I mean, he should have been given a buy. No, 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 hang on. You were saying earlier that Leon didn't need his Charizard to make it to the end. And for the record, we couldn't give Iris his Archeops, its flying gem, to compensate for Leon's Gen 18. So it does, in the end, sort of balance out. <laughs> Whatever. Iris flukes her way into the semifinals, where she'll be easy pickings for the winner of N versus Nimona. A clever Stealth Rock play from Nimona caused some trouble for most of N's team, another serious rock weakness there. But in the end, the synergy of his Sunny Day team proved to be too much, and the combined power of Reshiram and Arcanine took Nimona out of the tournament. You know, for a guy who talks a lot about the cruelty of battles, he sure is good at it, Richard. Right you are, and with that, it looks like we have our final four decided, and the semi-final stage is set up. And you know, with your own personal Leon's defeat aside, I don't think anyone would argue that these four trainers haven't earned their way there. Indeed, Richard, we've got a star-studded roster still left in the game, and these matches might very well steal the show. They better reinforce the digital ceiling out there, because the way these four have been fighting, they're going to blow the roof off of this place. <laughs> The semi-final matches today are brought to you by Shaman Shave Club, bringing a legendary shave to any hiker's face. So, Charlie, what's the first semi-final match looking like? Well, Richard, it's a good one. Cynthia versus Steven, the unstoppable force versus the immovable object. Cynthia has yet to lose a single Pokemon, but that Mega Metagross from Steven has been the strongest closer we've seen yet. I'll tell ya, I'm Team Cynthia, but I am very curious to see how this one goes. Well, folks, I got the results right here. And let me tell ya, this was as brutal as a battle as I've ever seen, and yet another clean sweep for Cynthia. She advances to the finals. Mmm, yeah, that's my pick, that's my pick. All right, all right, impartial, Charlie, when we're supposed to be impartial. Whew, sorry. And in our second semifinals matchup, we've got yet another clash of Unova champions. It's Iris versus N. Now, many would argue that it should be Leon in this place. Many? Yes, yes, many. I have my sources, okay? Anyway, she goes up against N's Sun team, which is proven to be very powerful. <laughs> Who would have thought having an actual strategy besides hit hard can really work out sometimes, doesn't it, Richard? And just like last time, the combo of Arcanine and Reshiram proved to be very powerful. Great combination of bulk and damage there. However, with some clever switching, Iris was able to take down the two fire threats, and the rest of N's team was easy pickings for her Salamence, meaning that, against all odds, Richard, Iris has managed to weasel her way into the finals. I don't believe it. Come on now. After all that, you can't say that she doesn't have even a little bit of talent. You know what? It doesn't matter how much talent she's got because she's going up against Cynthia in the finals who, let me remind you, has yet to lose a single Pokemon. With that, I can't argue. She will be a tough opponent for Iris to beat. But when there's a will, there's a way. And you know what, Charlie? It ain't about as hard you hit. It's about as hard as you can get hit and keep moving forward. Rocky, baby. Let's go on to the next round. 
I'm gonna be a very rich man soon, Richard, and I can't wait a single second more. So, let's get on with it. The final battle to determine who the strongest champion of them all is, Unova's Iris versus Sinnoh's Cynthia, starts right now. This final match is brought to you by Team Rocket's Ekans Oil. Get in on the ground floor for this unique investment opportunity and send your bank account straight to the moon? Are we sure about this one, guys? Like, it, sa it sounds like this is definitely a pyramid scheme. Just saying, like Team Rocket's Ekans Oil. Okay, they're, they're literally selling snake oil. Cynthia leads with Spiritium and Irish needs of High Dragon. As per the official rules of the tournament, Cynthia considers getting a little whistle off, but decides to switch out to Togekiss, a wise decision since it is immune to Dragon and takes no damage from that Dragon Pulse. Already Cynthia is reading her opponent like a goddamn book. Iris switches to Agron, no doubt expecting a four times super effective Dazzling Gleam to be coming her Hydreigon's way, but Cynthia predicts her again and uses Aura Sphere instead, hitting Agron for four times damage and taking an early lead already. Cynthia leads five to six without a scratch on her. Richard, how can Iris possibly come back from this? It looks like Iris' team really struggles against Togekiss. She opts for the Lapras and Togekiss could go for another Aura Spear but opts for an air slash instead. Maybe unsure if a non-stab aura sphere would be the one shot she's looking for, but she could be looking for a flinch instead and a chance to preserve some HP. Didn't happen, however, and Togekiss eats a blizzard, perhaps a rare misplay on the part of Cynthia. More like a cat playing with her food, Richard. Togekiss survives the blizzard, no problem, and finishes the Lapras off. Maybe not with as much health as she would have wanted, but Cynthia is up six to four, Nonetheless, looks like Iris is sending out her Archeops next. Cynthia opts to stay in. Her Togekiss does have a 5 level lead on Archeops. Maybe hoping to outspeed and take Arceus down to below half just so we can get the Defeatus ability activated. However, it looks like Archeops still on speed, goes for the Stone Edge, and lands, bringing the score 5 to 4. But more importantly, Charlie, that's Cynthia's first lost Pokemon in this entire tournament. Right you are, Cynthia could have no doubt switched out her Togekiss to keep the streak alive, but she's smart enough to not let her pride get in the way. Sometimes in chess, you need to make a few sacrifices to ensure the victory. We'll see how well that uh, sacrifice pans out. It looks like Cynthia is sending out her Milotic out to finish off Archeops. Now, Cynthia's Milotic is holding the Flame Orb, meaning that after the first turn, it will inflict itself with Burn to activate its Marble Scale booty, boosting its defense for the rest of the match. Milotic has been a formidable wall for this whole tournament thus far, so this first turn for the burn is critical. Indeed it is, and Iris seems to recognize that. She knows that Archaeops can't one-shot Milotic, so she fires off one powerful acrobatics, taking a huge chunk off of Milotic's health bar before allowing her own Pokemon to go down to a skull, bringing the score to 5 Cynthia, 3 Iris. With the burn now in play, Iris switches out to her Salamence. Now, we know that the rest of Iris' team is weak to ice, so that ice beam from Milotic is going to cause some problems. She's got to get rid of that thing quick. Indeed, but it looks like Crunch from Salamence is not enough to finish the job. Seems like she might have forgotten about Marvel Scale there, Richard, allowing Milotic to take down the Salamence in one fell swoop. That brings the score to 5 Cynthia, 2 Iris. Richard, is there any hope left for the upstart? Well, Charlie, that flame from Milotic is a double edged sword because it looks like that the burn status condition has almost worn Milotic out, and it's not exactly the fastest. Cynthia attempts to go for a recover to try and preserve the Milotic any way she can, but the High Dragon is just too fast, finishing it off and bringing that score 4 to 2. Now it's time for Porygon Z to hit the field. Now, we haven't seen much of it from Cynthia thus far in the tournament, but with its expert belt, high speed, and great coverage, this could be the thing that seals Iris' fate. But it looks like Hydreigon has the speed advantage. It fires off a Focus Blast and one-shots the Porygon Z, bringing the score to three Cynthia, two Iris. A gutsy play from Iris, but one that paid off big time. Looks like Cynthia opts to send Lucario next. No doubt looking for a super effective fighting type move, but it seems like she's taking some time on this choice. Knowing that her dragon will outspeed, and her Lucario would not appreciate a focus blast of any kind. 
she hops the plane that's safe, goes for the extreme speed, does some solid chip damage, but High Dragon fires off a fire blast. Super effective. However, what's this? Lucario lives, and that could be a major missed opportunity there, Charlie. It could be, Richard, but the battle's not over yet. Lucario is forced to go for another extreme speed here. He can't afford to take another hit like that. Fire Blast doesn't have very good accuracy, so it might miss. Ooh! But Iris decides to go for the Dragon Pulse instead for the guaranteed damage. It's resisted, but enough to take it down. Very wise play by Iris, even in the score to 2 2, but Hydreigon isn't looking so hot, and Garchomp has yet to hit the field. Cynthia sends in Spiritomb, and Hydragon still outspeeds and takes Spiritomb below half with a Dragon Pulse. But a Citrus Prairie pops off, bringing its health back up a bit, and Spiritomb gets the burn off. Hydragon keeps firing Dragon Pulses left and right. Spiritomb not having very good of a time there, and doesn't have a way to hit Hydragon very hard, so it uses a resisted Shadow Ball. But it's not enough to put it into burn range. High Dragon uses one more Dragon Pulse to take out his bay, take out Spirit Doom. And Ch Ch I can't talk, I'm excited, Charlie. I don't believe it, Charlie. Iris is taking the lead two to one. I never thought I'd see the day, Richard, but, well, that kid's got guts. But Hydreigon is on its last legs with that burn as Garchomp hits the field. And with its level advantage, it easily managed to outspeed and finish off the Hydreigon. All right, that means each side is dead even with just one Pokemon left. It's Cynthia's Garchomp against Iris's Hydreigon. Both are on full health, but Cynthia has levels on Iris. You gotta imagine things are not looking good for the Unova champ. The oh, hell! Come on, kid! You got this! Make yourself famous! Both of these are extremely heavy hitters, and Dragon is super effective on himself. It's gonna come down to the wire on which one of these two Pokemon is faster. And it looks like it's Cynthia's Garchomp, outspeeding with a huge Dragon Claw, slashing through Haxor's health, but Wait a minute, what's this? With its Focus Sash held item, Haxor survives on 1 HP and fires off an Outrage, which takes down the Garchomp in one hit, meaning that Iris is... Wait a minute, no! Garchomp's rough skin deals a bit of chip damage to Haxor's, meaning they're both down! This is the damnedest battle I've ever seen! So, so what happens? Who, who wins? The officials are watching the tape, and we're awaiting their decision. Oh, and an assistant is giving me a message. They've reviewed the tape. They've consulted the official rule book. Garchomp fainted first, meaning that your winner is Iris. By the skin of her teeth, Iris has claimed the title of Grand Champion. In the closest match I've ever seen, I was proves to all the naysayers wrong. She proves that she deserved to be in the finals, and she proves beyond the shadow of a doubt that Iris is the very best. Yeah! You know what? For once in my life, I'm glad to be proven wrong. Well, folks, there you have it. The champion from Black and White 2, the Dragon Tamer, Iris, takes the crown and proves that she is the strongest champion of them all. From the Pokemon Showdown Cyberspace Arena, I'm Charlie with my broadcast partner Richard, signing off. Hey, so I know I don't usually do outros in these videos, but I had to hop in here at the end and say a huge thank you to Icy Richard for helping me out with this video. He doesn't usually do this sort of highly scripted stuff, and I brought him on with super short notice, but he absolutely killed it. On his channel, he does a lot of live stream, let's play content, stuff like that. So if that seems like something you're interested in, go show him all the love. He was a huge help in this video and he's been helping me out behind the scenes a lot recently. There's probably one of those bubbles on screen that's gonna link to his channel at some point or in a couple seconds here. And there's a link in the description down below. So go show him some support that he deserves. So once again, massive, massive thanks to Richard. Assistant, I swear, on all that is holy. It's really not that complicated, man. You know what, come here, come here.